and they're abandoning our resources and our people are suffering. Women are being raped on a daily basis. Children are being killed. Men are being killed. Our children cannot go to school simply because they don't have school. Women live in state of fear every day. They cannot go out and fetch water because of fear of being raped. Soldiers who are supposed to be looking after people are the ones who are raping women in the Republic of Democratic of Congo. Why? Because Kabila, who is the president, is the puppet of the Western world. The Western world has put Kabila in power. For the last 10 years, he has done nothing for the, for the country. But what you can see is that over 80 million people have been killed since Kabila has come to power. And we want that to stop. We want you people to hear this message. The message is clear and loud. We want you people to get your hand off Congo. We want you people to get your hand out of Congo. We want you people to be interested in the situation of the people of Congo. We want Congo to be a free country. We want Congo to be a nation of peace. We want a Congo to be a place where people you can have and enjoy a holiday. We want Congo to be a place where everybody can prosper. We want Congo to be a place where people can come and enjoy, your, enjoy themselves. We want peace in Congo. Next week on Monday there will be election. We want the election to be free and fair. We don't want to have any involvement in that election. We don't want election to be rigged in Congo. We want election to be fair. We already have a candidate. People's choice for the Congo is a charity security. This is the people that the people of Congo, this is the person that the people of Congo want to be their next president. And we want Kabila to be out. We want to be out, out and out now. We want him to be out. Maybe you are asking, what can you do to help? We are standing here in the parliament. You have members of parliament. You people can go to your local member of parliament. Tell them about Congo. Tell them what's happening in Congo. Tell them that you people, you are ignorant, you don't know what's going on. People are dying. Australia is a democratic nation. We want Congo to enjoy the same democracy as Australia is enjoying. Therefore, people of Australia, we are asking you to go and talk to your MPs. Tell them about what's happening in Congo. Tell them about women who are being raped on a daily basis. Tell them about children who cannot go to school. Tell them about the children who are being enrolled in the army. Children are being enrolled in the army. These children cannot get education. Why? Because of the multinationals who are interested in the middle of the Republic of Democratic of Congo. They are planting the economy of the Congo. And as a result, Congolese people are very poor. We, we want you to take interest in what is happening in Congo. We want you to take interest about what is happening in Congo. We want you to be a spokespeople for a Republic of Democratic of Congo. We are talking about the global village. Congo is part of the global village, but there is no peace in Congo. There is no peace in Congo. If there is no peace in Congo, how can you come and enjoy a part of that global village? There is no way. There is no way. We want you to be involved in what is happening in Congo. At the same time as we are about to celebrate Christmas, the season of giving, people in the Democratic Republic of Congo are facing up to an election that is starting on Monday next week. Their elections in the past have been taken over by corporations that sell us the phones and the laptops. Corporations that profit from the destruction of the natural way of life, the, the liberty of people in the Congo. My name is Tim and I'm from Sydney. But this is no longer about Australia. This is about the world. The destruction and the death of people in countries such as the Democratic Republic of Congo is the destruction and the death of people living in our world. We profit from these countries. Our companies make profits in these countries. Our government is silent and complicit in allowing our corporations to enter these countries 
with very few regulations to pay the bribes they need to pay. Our investment funds, our banks, invest our money in the companies that make profits from making and selling weapons to these countries. We make the weapons that are sold to the dictators in Africa. We support the dictators in Africa because they support us. We are a lucky nation. We are not at this moment being killed. And yet people in this world, in this world are dying because of corruption, because of greed, because of selfishness and nationalism and racism. We say no to refugees. We say no to saying anything about the Congo. And yet, we sit around talking about how great it is here in Australia. How lucky we are. How can we think of ourselves as lucky when people living in the same world at the same time as us are facing a life of, of desperation, of rape, of death, children, being involved. <laughs> we have to start taking responsibility as global citizens, as members of the human race, first and foremost. We have to start looking after each other. We have to start working together. These issues, what's going on in the Congo, it's painful for people to know. It's painful for people to read about to learn about, to find out about. And yet these problems continue every day. And while we may sit around and say, well, it's not our problem, it's somebody else's problem. It is our problem. While our corporations are in these countries, it is our problem. While we like to think of ourselves as global jet setters who can travel anywhere we want to, it is our problem. We talk about being concerned about terrorism. This is terrorism. We are sponsoring terrorists who are attacking innocent people, who are using fear to keep people under control. My name is Mbui, uh, Mbui Chelantende. I am the elder of the Congolese uh, community of uh, New South Wales in Sydney. Uh, I would like to give uh, briefly uh, some information about uh, what we write. We wrote 50 years of USA dictatorship in Congo. Enough is enough. It's a surprise. Uh, it can surprise you when we talk about a dictatorship, USA dictatorship in Congo instead of USA uh, democracy in Congo. Why? It's simple. Because since go, uh, Congo got uh, its independence, people of Congo didn't yet uh, elect uh, their own candidate. Uh, the first president uh, of, uh, of Congo, uh, Kasavubu, uh, was replaced by Mobutu, uh, who was uh, known as a dictator, a dictator and who ruled for three, uh, 32 years. And uh, after Mobutu, there is uh, this one Kabila, uh, Kabila, who is ruling now for uh, about 14, uh, 14 years. So you understand that uh, from independence until now, uh, people of Congo are ruled by military, uh, military president imposed by USA, imposed by USA. It's why uh, we talk about USA dictatorship in, in Congo. But now, in uh, two, three days, we will be, uh, 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 there will be election in Congo. Uh, we would like people of Congo uh, to elect their own, uh, their own candidate, not to be imposed, uh, uh, to be imposed a ruler by USA. And uh, we have got information that 
about 600 military, eh, USA military are in Congo for the, mo the motive of self-defense. Self-defense of key, of who, we don't know. So, uh, it's why we talk about the dictatorship, USA dictatorship in, in Congo. Thank you uh, very much for uh, your, your time. We say, well, Mr. Rand, you spoke for Libya. Mr. Rand, speak for Congo. We want to hear your words. You spoke for Libya. Speak for Congo. We want to hear your voice. And that's why we are marching. That's why we are here. Well, you say, well, your correlation between you and Occupy Sydney. What's the correlation? Multinationals are plundering the Congo. They occupy Sydney, they, they, they represent 99%. And we are we, among the 99%. That's the correlation. People have been killed in the Congo. There is murdering of human rights activists happening in that country. And nobody is talking about it. That's the reason why we are here today. We said no, enough is enough. How many more millions need to be killed so that the voice of the women, the voice of children can be heard from the Congo? How many more millions? Enough, it is enough. That's why, that's why. Yes, I want to pass the message across. The stake is very high in Congo for the multinational. Children are dying, they're raping women. Congo is one of the richest countries in the mineral resources, but nobody cares. We want to pass the message through, because some people, they live in a comfort zone of ignorance. They live in a comfort zone of ignorance. We have to raise awareness what's happening in Congo right now. We're going to have a free and fair election, I hope so, but the multinationals are behind, behind the mineral resources of Congo. And people are dying, petrified bodies in the streets. They're raping women, and nobody talk about it. Nobody cares. They live in just comfort zone of ignorance. They don't know what's happening. The stake is very high in Congo. The international community doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything. Eight million people died in Congo. In Rwanda, we have about. 800,000, but they talk about it. The actual president of Rwanda is supported by the multinational. That's why they, they made a big broadcasting about Rwanda. What about Congo, the richest country in the world in terms of mineral resources? I want to raise your awareness. We have the facts. You go check it, and then you find out. The mobile phone you're using, the cellular phone, you don't know where it's coming from. 80% coming from the Democratic Republic of Congo. You pass around with mobile phone and you don't know where it's coming. We want Mr. Rad that has been speaking about Libya. Please, this is the time we want you to speak about Congo. The rape must be stopped. The killing of the people must be stopped. We want the fair and fair and just election in the Congo that is going to be happening on the 28th of this month. We want fair. People need to be happy. It's time. Everything has to come to an end now. We want our people to be happy. I'm one of them that is standing here. I know everything is okay here in Australia, but my people are here. My people are being killed. My people are dying. All the women are killing are being killed in Congo. All the people that are dying in Congo. That's why we are standing here. We should have been at our work. We are standing here to raise the awareness of the people that are being suffering in Congo. Please, we want somebody to speak about this. It's not only media that is suffering. Congo is suffering. The Congolese people are suffering. Congo is bleeding. Congo is bleeding. Congolese people are bleeding inside of them. They need a voice that is going to be heard. We want somebody to speak on behalf of the Congo. Please speak to the Congolese government. We don't want Kabila. Please, please. On behalf of the Congolese women, many of them are being raped. We are standing here to raise their awareness. Please, Mr. Ride, we know that we are speaking. You've been speaking about Libya. We know that you can speak about Congo. Please speak about our Congo. That's our Congo. There's so many resources in Congo. We know many people are enjoying the mobile phone today. You have all kinds of mobile phones. Do you really know where it's coming from? Do you know how you people get those mobile phones? People are dying in Congo for you to get the mobile phone here in Australia. You communicate, you have iPhone, you have iPhone 3. We have another one that will be coming soon. But do you know where it's coming from? Do you know how people get the millions to come and make a mobile phone? Because our people are dying each and every 
many resources in Congo have been taken out because of they want to use people. They are using our own people because of what they want. We need justice now. It's time up. Everything has to come to an end. We need a fair election in Congo. That's why we are standing here today. We want somebody to speak out. That's why we are raising our awareness this morning. We know that something that needs to be done. It has to come to an end. Enough is enough. My name is Patrice Nyembo. I am the president of Congolese community of Australia. I'm also a social welfare secretary of the African Community Council, born in the refugee camps. And uh, why I say that? Because I have experienced a lot of atrocities since my young age. I know UN. I know US, America, I know Belgium, I know Europe and uh, after some time I've been also pushed to come here in Australia where I did get my first citizenship with I am enjoy it now. They, sorry. Yep. So can you tell us a bit about the history of the Congo in the past sort of 200 years? Ah, the history of Congo, it's uh, the same, it's just one. First, the beginning, Africa was enjoyed his freedom. But when the first invaders came into Africa, they found flora, fauna, and resources they were amazed and they fell in love with Africa and uh, they were thinking to go in Africa to settle there. With our hospitality, our end it was opened till Leopold II heard about what it was going at that time in Africa. He decided to go just in the heart of Africa to occupy to occupy the Congo and from there he start his empire and his business during that business he killed 50 percent of the population in Congo at that time and the Remaining one third part were amputated, and at that time, Edmond Morel was a journalist. He went to Congo. He looked at it. It was a new man. He went to Europe, USA, to talk about it until they decide to call for the Berlin Conference. It was in. 1884. They started that meeting which never ends. It was the, la the longest meetings Europe, USA, never, never. That meeting to devise Africa went for one year and during that time all people who was advocated for human rights they been killed. They've been dismissed in that meeting. It's not only they killed Congolese. No. Those multinationals started since long time their greediness. They killed even some of British people, Belgian people, who were advocates for human rights. And after that, they said no Congo have to be looking by the Belgium. And Belgium it was like a caretaker, caretaker about uh, seven, and, uh, seven countries of Europe plus the USA was looking at the Belgium. How? He was taking the resources 
and the use to devise those resources. Congo never, even until now, spend or take resources and sell. Even during the independence, it was the Belgium who was selling for Congo. Okay, after that, the time of independence came. The time of independence, no. We didn't ask the leaders at that time was not asking for the independence. When the people was trying to free themselves, the Belgium say, okay, we'll give you independence. But the leaders at that time was looking for the colonization. And that the colonization didn't happen, they give them independence. And during that independence, the first man who was fought, was fought for the freedom, it was Patrice Emery Lumumba. After six months, they killed him. They killed him. They replaced him with Mobutu. What I want to say, I want to summarize, like the multinational started with Leopold II in Africa with the cooperation of other multinationals. Even now, they just change the colors. They just change the leaders. They just change the stories. But, but, the action, the strategies, it's still the same. Now, we have 9.5 million died, been killed. Why? Because of the resources. Behind that, there is the support of USA, Commonwealth, and all the Eastern power countries. More, most of them, they've been dictated also by the multinational companies. That's why today we came to the roots. We have to call us all of the grassroots. No difference of color, no difference of language, no difference of trap to fight to fight for those multinational company to stop to stop that otherwise if we leave them they will go and suck our blood now they are in australia in america all over the world they don't care even the governments those governments they are like puppets they are just following what the big corporation are leading them to say and to do that's why i call for all australian for all citizens of the world to stand up to say no, all the 99 percent of the citizens of the world, they have to stand up and to stop them. Otherwise, we we'll lose this planet. For example, in Congo, those multinationals they are cutting trees, and we have that uh, global warming. We have all of those climate change. If really we can leave Congo with those trees. It can help a lot to this environment. But because of the greedy of that few people, this world become hell. I'm asking, I'm calling for the people of the world to stand up, the citizen of the world. I am Australian who have lived here and studied here. Despite my French accent, I know now and i can see like an ego i've been in congo i've been in australia and i said for the people i say for the people of australia to stand up and to face otherwise in two three years it will be worse than this kevin rad is talking he's talking about what is going in tripoli what is going in libya but he didn't talk about what is going now in Congo. I, want, I would like to inform you, even they appoint an ambassador two months ago in Congo. He didn't last there for long. He just leave the office and went back to Zimbabwe. He found like in Zimbabwe, it's peacefully, it's safer more than Congo. This is amazing. Thank you.